So I'm going to um, sort of expand upon substitution mutations and the outcomes of, of those substitution mutations. Substitution mutations can lead to several various outcomes. Uh, some changes uh, in a substitution mutation might literally do nothing. These are called silent mutations. Uh, and sort of going along with what that means, you will not see them at all. So those changes to the DNA sequence, they do happen. They ultimately do not change the amino acid sequence. So they're not noticed in the resulting protein. This is a result of that redundant genetic code. where um, multiple um, codons can code for the same amino acid. So the actual codon has changed, but the amino acid stays the same. Uh, so here, this is our uh, sort of regular strand, our original. Here's the DNA. Here's the mRNA, right? And we're looking at the underlying portion, and that particular codon codes for phenylalanine, okay? Here's the uh, silent mutation where that C was now turned to a G, which in turn changed our RNA sequence. However, UUG and UUC, turns out they both code for phenylalanine. So you still end up getting the exact same amino acid sequence, therefore the exact same protein, and you will never know that you had this mutation. So that's a silent mutation. The next type of substitution mutation is a missense mutation. These mutations result in a totally different amino acid than what the original was. Um, so this seems small, especially when protein chains can be several hundred amino acids long. Um, it seems small, but it can have huge effects in some cases. Uh, so again, we can see that our irregular DNA, RNA, and protein sequence ultimately codes for phenylalanine, but let's say instead of changing the end, we change the first nucleotide from an A to a G, changing, of course, our mRNA. That changes phenylalanine to a leucine here, and now it hasn't affected any of the other amino acids in the sequence, but this particular one has changed. It might be huge, might make almost no difference at all. However, an example of a huge change that is the result of a single nucleotide being substituted, resulting in a single missense mutation out of six billion base pairs in your DNA, one little change can cause sickle cell anemia. All right? And uh, that's only one little teeny amino acid change changes uh, you from having regular blood cells to possibly having sickle-shaped blood cells, which have a difficult time getting through tiny capillaries and can ultimately clog and can be very dangerous. The last type of substitution mutation is a nonsense mutation. So this actually causes a premature stop codon. So here we have, again, our original DNA, RNA, and amino acid strand, and then if we accidentally substitute an A in for what used to be a G, we now get a UAG in the middle of our mRNA, which codes for a stop. This is a huge change, the biggest of those three, typically, because you could have 200 more amino acids that you need, and now you do not have any of those. That's a huge change.